What's up survivors? How many of you have grabbed a knife, started sharpening it, and it came out duller than where you started? Well, hit the subscribe button, grab a knife, follow along because I'm gonna show you two methods to sharpen your knife. The circular method and the draw method. And I've used that 99% of the time throughout my life and it works just fine. Quick and easy. Well, welcome to my office. The main styles of stones that you see out there, they're either manufactured or they're cut straight from the ground, straight from a rock out of the ground. So there's going to be round stones, rectangular stones, and also manufactured diamond sharpeners with two different sides, a coarse side and a fine side. Usually they have two different grits on there. And you also have your rod style or just steel, honing steel. So this works well to sharpen your kitchen knives. So most of us have seen those. And so usually you either have a pocket knife right here, folding blade pocket knife, or we have a fixed blade knife. So these concepts here relate to a kitchen knife, any knife that you're carrying, whatever you want to use. The main thing that that you want to think about though is if it has serrations on here you're not going to be using this technique it's more for just a smooth style blade and this is where you use these methods here so to start out if you have a stone you want to make sure that it's cleaned off too so you can put it in some water some of them are designed for water and most of the stones you can use either oil or water you can use a honing oil and all that does is basically as you're sharpening your stone right here, as you're sharpening your knife, parts of the knife and stone are wearing away and filling up the pores in this stone. So you wanna clean it off, make sure that your stone allows it to cut the knife and steal some more. So our stone is cleaned off. The pores are nice and open. They're not all clogged up. It's ready to go, ready to sharpen some steel. Now always be safe with your folding knives because you don't want them to fold back on your hands. So open them with two hands and then close them with two hands with your fingers out of the way. Don't close them like this. Self-critiquing. Don't close it with just one thumb that could close in on your fingers. So two hands, open and close. If you need to pass it, pass it closed. If you need to pass a fixed blade knife, have the blade facing up, you hold the spine of the knife here and then face it towards them face the handle right towards them hand it to them make awkward eye contact with them and then make sure that they have the knife and then you pass it to them and then they grab it and take it out same thing so a handle is up everything's nice and safe it's not facing down into your hand so it can cut you that way you're not passing it like this holding the spine giving it to them safest way to pass a knife so we decide we want to sharpen our folding blade knife. So this represents a lot of different knives that are out there. And you want to think on how thin the steel is. And so what my angle, what my bevel is on our knife right here. So what the bevel is, is the shiny part of this knife right here, of this bolt knife. And so it's the angle that's cut into the primary piece of steel. And so the wider it is, the more blunt it is. The narrower it is, the finer the edge. So when you have a thinner blade, you want a finer edge from there. And you first want to determine, well, how sharp does my knife even need to be? Well then cut something. Cut a piece of wood, cut a stick. Well, not sharp enough, then we need to sharpen it. 
that's all the sharper your knife needs to be is it needs to cut what I want it to cut and so a lot of times with our stones that it comes with with this manufactured one is a coarse side here and then a smooth side so if your knife is real dull you start on the coarse side and then you can move to the smooth side afterwards and so a lot of times with these round stones it works better to do a circular method before you do the circular method you need to determine what my bevel is going to be so if you start with your knife 90 degrees to the stone that's 90 degrees to it half of that is 45 degrees half of 90 is 45 half of 45 degrees is 22.5 and it just so happens to be right about the blade width of this knife right here up off the stone so it's easy to start with half of 90 is 45 half of 45 22.5 and that gives you a good starting point for a bevel from there so for a thin bladed knife have a nice steep bevel so that cuts in nice and sharp into whatever you're trying to cut and then what we're going to do is we're going to hold our fingertips below this stone so imagine this is a bar stool that you're sitting on yep. and then your fingers are the legs so make sure your legs are beneath the bar stool because if you hold them up like this and you sharpen you're going to cut your fingers you don't want to hold it like this this is the most natural way for people to hold it and basically they hold their fingertips down here but then the pad of your palm is up in the way and you can cut it so the safest way is to hold it like this find your bevel and then you can just do a circular method i'm going to start at the back of the blade and go towards the tip i'm doing a circular method and then i'm working my way out towards the tip and see i'm lifting up slightly start at the back i'm just doing small circles and then up towards the tip you always want to be thinking that i want to cut into the stone right here cutting into the stone any up towards the tip because if i'm doing the draw method i'm trying to take a slice right off the stone but there's not much to work with here so you can do the draw method but with a round stone it's easier to do the circular method sharpen it and then you don't want to test how sharp it is by running your finger across it cut what you're trying to cut see if it's starting to sharpen up and if not keep going on the coarse side and then move to the smooth side start at the back go towards the tip now you want to do the same number of strokes on each side so our bevel doesn't go off one side or the other when one side isn't steeper than the other side you know all over the place that's what we're going to cut and then there's a circular method close it with two hands it works well with axes to use a circular method find the bevel again and you can move the stone instead of the axe or tool itself so the other option is to either move the axe or move the stone and then hone your axe up that way the other method that you can use is the draw method and it works well for these longer rectangular stones you can still do the circular method on here no big deal that works just fine but with the draw method you're using the whole stone so make sure your fingertips are below it find the right bevel and then use the whole stone and then end towards the tip and then flick the tip right off same number of strokes on both sides there's nothing wrong with going three on one side and then three on the other side as long as it's the same and you can see this darkness that's happening in here part of the stone wearing away steel coming off and so then grab some water clean it off and then keep going 
Same thing with our diamond stones, as they call them right here. And so there's little pieces of diamond or diamond dust on top of this steel right here. So the whole thing is in diamond. So it's just on top of the steel. There's a coarse side and then a smoother side to these. So depending again on how sharp your knife is right here, you can start, cut a little slice off from the back, and then go the other way, back and forth. Find the appropriate bevel, same number of strokes on both sides. And then with a thicker knife right here, you have some thicker steel, you can make your bevel, you can widen it out slightly. So instead of 22.5, you could go up to 30 or so. Like anywhere in between there is gonna be just fine. What you don't wanna do is go out to 45. That's just too much of an angle. It's just unnecessary. It's not gonna cut as well for you. So the thinner the bevel, the better it's gonna cut for you. Two strokes on one side, two on the other. Is that sharp enough there? Flip it over. Two on one, two on the other. And it's as simple as that. So if I have my big machete knife, I can use a stone again. Now for survival, can you use a rock? Very good. Yes, you can use a rock. Just find one that's smooth and that's going to act and look like a sharpening stone that you buy from the store. Or you have your sharpening steel, you can do the same thing. Come towards yourself one way, come away. Make sure you're just at the right bevel. You want to get the whole length of the blade. Common thing that I see is people kind of lose pressure off towards the tip because you want to be putting moderate pressure along your stone. Because if you just go real light, it's not going to cut that steel off very fast. So moderate pressure, but you don't need to be pressing down as hard as you can. So you can either go this way, and you go on one side here, and stay at the same bevel, and go on the other side. That's where you see the chefs do it that way, mainly just because it's faster. Is a sharp knife or axe a safe one? For the most part it is. Because if you're chopping into a piece of wood or a log, there's less of a chance of it glancing off. You still need to be accurate, because dangerous things can happen. All cutting tools are dangerous. but. They're an essential part of life. When you're using a knife, a sharp one is safer because you're using less effort to push through your material. As a general rule, if you're pushing away from yourself, you shouldn't cut yourself. But sometimes accidents happen. They just happen. I was cutting into something slightly to the side of me, and it cut through real fast, and then back towards me and cut into my hand because my hand was close by. So you just want to be careful in those different situations. I always try and analyze it. One of the big things is you don't want to use your body as a platform. Don't hold a piece of wood right here. Like add your body as a platform and start cutting into it. So remember the circular method and the draw method. Being safe with it, using the same number of strokes on both sides. And you'll be able to sharpen your knives up plenty sharp for whatever you need to do. Keep surviving.